Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, just thought I'd do a little video on the UK Strongest Man that is coming up. That is the next big show that I'm aware of that uh, some of the guys are going to be competing in. It's uh, going back to St Albans. So last year, uh, Ultimate Strongman brought the competition to St Albans. It was a real success. They had a really great turnout um, and they're going to come back and do it again this year. So we have the list of athletes. We have most of the events, and I just thought I'd run through it for some guys if you were interested, uh, just to get an idea of what's going to be happening in a couple of weeks for UK Strongest Man. So just to go back over some history for those that don't know already, uh, UK Strongest Man is ran by Glenn Ross. Glenn Ross used to compete in Strongman, um, also in the World Strongest Man under Colin Bryce. So it's quite interesting because Glenn runs Ultimate Strongman and Colin runs uh, Giants Live, which is the qualifying tour for World Strongest Man. So you have these kind of two rival camps in Strongman competing for world domination, along with um, all the other co competitions like the Arnold Strongman Classic um, and the Strongman Champions League. But um, going back to Glenn, Glenn competed in Strongman, uh, attended World Strongest Man five times. He unfortunately never made the final and then decided that he wanted to do some promoting himself and started up Ultimate Strongman. Uh, and as you can see, I've been to a few of their shows. This is one of the first ones that I went to um, up in Nottingham. And they are good shows, uh, generally held outside. So you get kind of a summer vibe if it's sort of in sort of June or July time of the year. Um, and that's the big difference between a, an Ultimate show and a, a Giants live show. Giants tend to go for the big indoor arenas. There's a lot more expense. There's a lot more um, on the line, per se, in terms of sort of funding and costs. But you don't get a lesser show with the Ultimate Strongman show. Still great strongmen, still great events. Just ran slightly differently. And actually, as a fan, it's probably worth going to see both to see which one sort of suits you best or, or whether you just want to go to both shows. So um, going back to UK Strongest Man, they've had quite a varied selection of winners over the years. Um, I'm going to go back to sort of 2002. I don't want to go back um, too far in time, but it wasn't actually held in 02 and 03, interestingly. Um, prior to that, there were some other competitions, and I'm not sure how long Glenn Ross has been running U, uh, you know, UK Strongest Man for, because although he runs Ultimate Strongman, UK's Strongest Man is a title, so he must have either purchased that from someone or took it over from someone. So uh, Glenn actually won it in 2004, and I know he was running the show at the time. So, um, you know, winning his own show, um, you know, got to be off to a good start. And then it carried on into 2005 when Terry Hollands won it. So Terry Hollands, UK Strongest Man, 2005, the first and only time he won UK's. Um, and then we get uh, back to Glenn, back to world domination for Glenn Ross. He wins it in 2006, 2007. 2008 and in 2009 I don't know what happened but Jimmy Marku just took it so uh Jimmy Marku another great strong man we haven't seen for a little while he came onto the scene um did really really well won the UK's in 09 uh but then Glenn came back and took it again in 010 or 2010 so Glenn is a five times UK strongest man champion um, and a three times Britain's Strongest Man champion. So those two competitions are actually the same competition. Uh, but Giants Live run the Britain Strongest Man and Ultimate Strongman run the UK Strongest Man. But they're both basically the same thing. Um, you've got the best competitors from England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales all in the same event, uh, battling it out for the strongest. Um, and, and what happened after 2010 is uh, a little... A little guy called Eddie Hall came in and, and ruined Glenn's party. <laughs> and he he ended up winning it for quite a while. Um, and I know Ed was really adamant on, you know, having the most records in that competition. So he went on to win it in 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. So Eddie Hall is a six times UK Strongest Man champion, just pipping Glenn by one competition, making him the ultimate uh, UK strongest man champion uh, so far and it would take someone quite a few years to catch that so that's his title for now uh, then what happened is Eddie stopped competing in ultimate strongman shows he turned more to sort of competitions with Giants Live he got involved with them as a promoter um, competed in world strongest man in um, in 16 and 17 
um, and and didn't go back to any of the ultimate strongman branded shows. So this left it wide open for any of the other competitors looking to get in the mix. And that's exactly what happened in 17. And uh, Laurence Charlet went in and he's a two times Britain's strongest man champion and a one times Europe's strongest man. So Laurence is a really great strong man. And he came in and took that title in 17. And interesting names in the mix there. Tom Stoltman came second. So already showing his sort of world level pedigree at that point. Um, Pat O'Dwyer came in third, also rounding off the podium. So that was an interesting year in 17. Uh, obviously, last year's was competed as well. Uh, Pat O'Dwyer got, got, got his own back. He came, he came first and won. So congratulations to Pat. He's um, a really great Irish strongest man. I think he's run, won um, Ireland's strongest man about three times now. Um, Phil Roberts was second and Laurence Charlet came third place. So that takes us up to present day 2019. So as you can see, quite a lot of the guys that are quite popular, quite a lot of the British guys uh, that you see at World's Strongest Man compete at this show. Uh, so I've taken some screenshots to save me writing everything down. So let's have a quick roundup and see who they've got competing at this year's Ultimate Strongman, UK Strongest Man. Uh, the competition is going to be from the 26th to the 28th of July in St. Albans in the UK. Historically, this competition was held in Ireland. Um, it was a very good competition for many, many years. But eventually, Glenn Ross decided to bring it to the UK, well, to England um, and into a different part of England that hadn't had this kind of competition before. And it proved to be a massive success the first year where I attended I believe they had somewhere around sort of six, seven thousand attendees over the three days, uh, which for a first sort of time bringing it to this country showed the massive support for that title. And you can't help uh, feel that Eddie Hall didn't have some um, hand in that by winning it for five years in a row, being such a prominent um, UK British strongman on the strongman circuit. It really did bring some focus to that title. And I think um, the UK's Strongest Man is probably Ultimate Strongman's best show if you were going to go and watch one of their competitions. They do lots of other uh, style of show, but this is sort of the top show that they currently put on. Um, so athletes for this year, they split them into two groups. So group A, we've got Pat O'Dwyer of Ireland, who is the current champion. We've got Paul Benton from Scotland, Daniel Gracia from England, Gavin Bilton from Wales, Andrew Flynn from England, Scott Milne from Scotland, Chris McNaughton from Ireland and Ryan Bennett from England. So that is Group A this year. Um, then you have Group B. That's going to be Graham Hicks. Now, I wanted to talk about Graham. So Graham is the current Britain's strongest man. So he currently holds that other title. So if he can win UKs as well, he will be one of a very small handful of people who have won those titles concurrently. So I'm guessing Glenn Ross would have had Britain's and UKs at the same time. Um, Eddie Hall would have had Britain's and UKs at the same time. So he could be in that very select few athletes that's managed to do that or achieve that. Um, Graham, I spoke to him last year, a bit of a laugh, and I said, come on, you can do this, man. You're really good. You could take UK Strongest Man. And I think last year he just wasn't ready or he, he had other priorities, other plans. But this year um, they talked him into it. He's already got Britons. So now he needs to go through and, uh, and take the UKs. Uh, it'd be really great to see him win it. And, and the funny thing is him and Pat O'Dwyer, they're really good friends. We went to, um, I went up to Morecambe with Brian Shaw when I did a UK tour with him. And um, Pat was staying at um, Graham's house. We went out for like a roast dinner. They came and trained at the gym where the seminar was being held. And you can see those two, they're just really good buddies um, off, off the circuit. So they'll be having loads of fun with this, really enjoying the banter. And I'm sure they look forward to competing against each other. Um, I think Graham's maybe a little bit stronger. Pat would disagree with me, but they, they both have um, their, their good events and, uh, and Graham's a really good overhead presser. I think slightly better than Pat. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top this year or if another athlete takes the, the title. Uh, so we've got Graham Hicks in Group B. We have Mark Jeans from Wales. We have Sean Logan from England, Jonathan Kelly from Ireland, Louis Jack from Scotland, Rob Spence from England. Matt Diamond from Wales and Chris Morgan from England. So it's, uh, you know, some new names in there you may not have heard, some junior champions that competed previously um, and a good mix of English, Irish, Scottish 
um, and Welsh athletes rounding out the field. So that's what's going to happen. I'm assuming it's a three day competition. Group A will go on the Friday. Group B will go on the Saturday. And then on the final, the final people to make it through, I think there'll probably be eight to 10 athletes in the final and they will compete in five events in a one day show to be crowned the UK's strongest man. So a bit like world's strongest man this year, it's going to be tough. It's going to be pretty brutal if you're doing, you know, two days on the trot or if it's not set up quite like that and they do group A and B Friday and Saturday and they do say three events one day and three the next, you know, it's three days of competition potentially. So it's going to be pretty, pretty grueling. Um, so let's move on and talk about the events. Uh, the first event, disciplines. Glenn likes to call them disciplines. Um, I remember being disciplined at school, so um, I just call them events. <laughs> um, Viking Forge Nutrition. So that's the sponsor for this one. And it's the Husafel Stone Carry. And that will kick off the UK Strongest Man final on day one. And it's 183 kilos. And it's the distance. So this will be where they'll have four or three or four, probably three runs set up. Uh, the guys will lift up the Husafel stone, keep it high on their chest, make sure they're able to keep breathing, uh, make sure they've got a good, I say grip, usually they can't get their hands or fingers locked, um, and they need to walk up and down as many times as they can until they drop the stone, which is where the distance will be taken. Um, from memory, the last time I went, Pat O'Dwyer was very good at this event. Um, I've not seen Hixie do uh, Husafel for a while, and, um, and the other guys, again, um, it's anyone's game on the day. You know, weathers can have an effect if it's raining, if it's slippery, if it's too hot. Um, you know, whether you've chalked the stone, whether you've got a good grip on it, all those sort of things can make a big difference. So event one will be Husafel stone. Event number two is a max deadlift head to head. So Glenn always likes to put a bit of a spin on things. Um, so they're going to start off at 330 kilos. Uh, two guys head to head, they're going to pull 330, then they're going to add 20 kilos and they're going to keep adding 20 kilos until basically they're down to four guys. So I'm guessing it's not going to be head to head in a sense of two guys just keep lifting until they max out. It's going to be two guys lift 330, then two more guys jump in and pull 330. And once everyone in the field has been, they'll be lifting 350, 370, 390. Um, it says here, once they're down to four people, they're going to start um, increasing the weight by 10 kilos per lift. And eventually it says we'll find out who's got the strongest back in the UK. So uh, whoever wins that event will take a bit of a, a bit of a scalp in the deadlift. But that will be good points going into event three. So that will very nicely split the pack up because deadlift is one of those things where most guys are either really good at it. Um, or it's one of those things they maybe struggle with. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see who comes out top of the deadlift. I know Graham's got a good deadlift, but hey, Power Dwyer, how are you doing? How's the deadlift? We'll find out. Um, event number three is going to be the pole push. I don't like this event. Um, I don't know whether it's because it's too simple, too boring, too old fashioned. But Glenn likes some of these odd events. And there's probably a good reason. It's probably just me. But he says the Celtic man-on-man -man wrestling test date trees of warrior history used in ancient times to prepare armies for battle you need power endurance and cunning to win this head-to-head -head discipline so this will be where you have like a big log with some sort of rope handles and you've got to push each other you know i'm going to guess outside of a ring or across a line um and it will be a knockout scenario now this this event will favor the heavier athlete so Although Hixie and, and Pat O'Dwyer are very strong, there might be someone slightly bigger, slightly heavier. Um, people with the weight advantage will definitely do well in this event. Um, people can slip. I've seen that happen before. So the push-pull event, uh, the pole push, uh, event three, will be interesting. It says, who has the brains and the brawn to win this one and avoid, uh, and avoid the strongman discipline for eliminator? So is Glenn Ross taking a leaf out of World's Strongest Man's books? It looks like he is. So we go from discipline three to discipline four, the eliminator. So it's Roman cars deadlift hold. So I'm guessing it's a bit like, again, World's Strongest Man, where they're going to have a deadlift hold for time. It says the bottom three in each group will go head to head in this eliminator, uh, lifting and holding a one ton Porsche convertible or one ton of Porsche convertibles. So potentially it could be two Porsches on a, a front-handled car deadlift sort of setup, and they've got two of them, 
and the guys are facing each other and it's for time. Um, and, you know, it's going to be really harsh because it's not necessarily down to who's the best deadlifter. Uh, it's just going to come down to grip, determination, uh, pain threshold, that sort of thing. As we saw, Brian Shaw struggled at World's Strongest Man. So you may be good at grip, but it may not necessarily favor you on the day. So make sure your hands are dry, to put chalk on your hands. You know, the guys know what they're doing. But, uh, you know, Brian mentioned that some sweat dripped down his hand and, and the bar slipped out of his hand. So you've got to be careful. You don't want to sacrifice your place due to making any kind of small mistakes. So um, that's event four. And it doesn't state yet what event five will be. So I'm going to chuck it in there and say it's at the Stones. Um, every Glenn Ross event I've ever seen has got at the Stones as a finale. It's kind of Stones of Strength is what he's, uh, he calls them. He has these big whiskey barrels, um, which are going to be all the same height. And the stones are old, big, dusty stones. They're very, very big. And although they may not weigh as much as World's Strongest Man, we've heard people mention that the final stone that's around the 170 kilo mark or 180 kilo mark is probably just as hard, if not harder, than the 200 kilo stone they use at World's Strongest Man. So the stones are going to be a real test after the guys have done all the other events. And I like I do like the idea of the eliminator because it does mean if guys have qualified after event two, they get a bit of a rest before going into stones, albeit from my current understanding, it will be on the same day. So that's the five events that's going to be used uh, for this year's UK Strongest Man. Um, also to note, Steve Stevens, he's a strong man. He's messaged me. I think he sent me a video uh, if I'm right. He's attempting to break Eddie Hall's British dumbbell um, overhead press record uh, that currently stands make sure I get this right uh, at 124 kilos so Steve Stevens is attempting to break Eddie Hall's record at this event so they're chucking in a nice little record breaker which I think is really nice um, everyone talks about Eddie's log but no one's really talking about the dumbbell now we know Mateusz Kieliskowski from Poland he has the world record I think it's 150 kilos, something ridiculous. Uh, that was also done at a Ultimate Strongman event. That was Summer Mania 2, which I helped put together in Southampton, which is where I live. Um, that event hasn't happened this year, but it looks like they're doing some of these other record attempts within current shows, which is great. So that's, um, that's going to be interesting if you can do that. And also to mention, you know, if you're going to have someone referee the UK Strongest Man, and you want the greatest strongman of all time, who do, you, who do you have referee the competition? I would have maybe said Jeff Capes because he's British and, you know, it's a bit of history, but, but Big Z's coming. Big Z's coming to town. So he's coming to St Albans. So Drinus Vickers will be the head referee for UK Strongest Man. So we've got a great lineup of athletes, a great referee, um, a little bit of a record breaker on the side there for Steve. Hope he does well. Good luck in that dumbbell. Um, and yeah, this is the next big show on the agenda that I'm aware of. So if you have a strongman calendar, if you're in the UK, if you're not in the UK, um, you know, it was a really good outdoor event when I attended two years ago. Um, I'm guessing it's the same setup. There's three lots of tiered seating, much like you'd see um, at an outdoor show, maybe in the States. Um, they have food carts. There's alcohol out the back. You can have a pint. Um, they're selling merchandise, T-shirts and hats, all sorts of things. So it is a great day out and it is kind of filling that gap between the next event that's coming up, which will be Giants Live in September uh, in Manchester. Now, there are lots of other um, amateur competitions, uh, competitions run by local gyms, but the Ultimate Strongman shows and the Giants Live shows, in my opinion, are the penultimate shows in England and the UK. And they're the two that kind of shape strongman from where, where I'm from. Um, if you're in Ireland, uh, Iceland, uh, Hathor's been sort of bigging up and promoting Iceland's strongest man, which he's won, won now like eight or nine times. So he's going for the win again. He's now um, better from his injury, which is good to hear. Um, and if you're in America, America's strongest man also, that must be coming up at some point. It would be nice to see some big names at that show. I know previously uh, Brian Shaw's won that competition um and Dimitar Savatinov has won there so it would be nice to see some of the the sort of top end pros from worlds maybe attend that one as well because these these sort of country titles they've got to be they've, they've got to be promoted a little bit better maybe they are really great titles to have um as well as the UK strongest man there's England strongest man 
Ireland's strongest man, Scotland's strongest man and Wales' strongest man. And there was a little bit of drama earlier on in the year. Glenn Ross was um, previously working with the promoters of those current areas or locations. Um, some deals, unfortunately, didn't go through and he's now set up his own version of those competitions. So they have happened. These guys have qualified and these are the boys that you see listed below in the UK's Strongest Man show. So if you're looking to qualify for UK's Strongest Man, you can now only do that through Glenn Ross's own personal Scotland Strongest Man, Wales Strongest Man and whatever. You know, there's there's a different show. Now, if you're going to compete for Giants Live, I, I think they've taken on the um the previous shows that were those qualifiers so if you now go to uh scotland's strongest man sort of the original official competition that it is and was um that will gain you entrance to a giants live show and placing well there will gain you entrance to world's strongest man and that's the same for the welsh irish and english qualifier so keep an eye out for those if you're on facebook or any of the other channels giants live release the information and all the events if you're looking for events for ultimate strongman or giants live just go into their facebook page click events and you'll see the list of the events and when they're actually due to happen so I'm just trying to think. I could talk about some other stuff. I could take some questions. I've seen there's lots of um, lots of comments, so that's really great. So let's have a look and see what people are saying. Uh, Giuseppe, hi there. How you doing? Good to see you again, man. Um, Tim Jenkinson, Glenn Ross, haven't heard his name for a while. Yeah, Glenn's not competed for a number of years. Um, he's still around. He's still promoting, um, but you don't see him as much as you used to. They do have... Um, these competitions, these shows will be um, aired in the UK on Channel 5 at Christmas, kind of in between or before the Giants live shows. So it's a little bit confusing because it's a completely different promotion um, and has nothing to do with uh, Giants or Worlds. But to the general public, it's just another strongman show that we get to watch and enjoy. So Glenn Ross generally does some of the commentary on that. So that that's probably the next time you'll see him if you don't see him at one of the actual shows um hardest man in tarot hey mate cheers for the updates no worries buddy happy to do it um we'd love to hear what your thoughts are on how far larry wheels could take it so keeping this short and sweet larry wheels recently pulled his bicep tore his bicep injured his bicep he was supposed to compete at the giants live wembley show unfortunately having to pull out um he has stated that he's looking good for uh the september event in manchester so he must be lined up for that now to kind of come and finish what he started he's also going to be as, as far as i'm aware doing something with world's ultimate strongman which was uh set up like a year or two ago and that's in dubai so he's going to be doing something there because they've had him over there and, and trained him up and next year he's already the uh poster boy poster child uh, wearing like a leopard skin onesie. I'm not sure what it is um, from the old days. And he's going to be at the Royal Albert Hall for the Giants Live um, Classic, which they're doing the Strongman Classic next year. Um, a bit like the Arnold Classic. It's going to be it's going to get confusing. Um, but they're trying to bring it back to where strength started. Um, you know, it will be interesting to see what events they bring i think it's a really great opportunity to bring some really weird and different strongman events like real old school tests of strength bending bars not necessarily over people's heads because i know that was dangerous but um you know let's see them do something different um you know they've, they've got the, the stage definitely uh location is london um and they've got a real opportunity to capitalize and do something a little bit special and so i'm just hoping that they they really put that that extra, the extra ideas behind that and the extra effort. I've already joked about, um, you know, Larry's the outfit they had him in and they should do like a leopard print t-shirt and, you know, just really milk the old school strongman look, give the fans something to buy, get some merchandise out there because people like to buy stuff. It's nice to have something to, you know, remember the show and sort of be a part of, be a part of this community that we're all part of. Um, but how far will he take it? Depends how injured he keeps getting, if he keeps getting injured. Depends how many opportunities. I don't think he's shy of opportunity. Um, the promoters seem to be throwing themselves at him because he's got a good following. Uh, 1.2 million, I think it is, on um, Instagram. Uh, he's got 750 odd thousand on YouTube. So if he says something, there's a real big audience that are going to hear what he has to say. So if he's promoting a Giants Live show, it's got to help. Um, normally, the normal sort of procedure would be collecting in people's emails, 
paying Facebook and other com uh, social media companies to promote your event, but that will only do so much. A lot of this is built up over a long amount of time of hard work, working with us, the, the strongman community, networking. So um, yeah, Larry, Larry will be fine in terms of invitations. In terms of how he's going to compete, injuries are a massive part of strongman. There's not one strongman out there that's never been injured and probably not been injured like lightly, like, you know, proper, proper bad, tearing biceps, tearing, you know, quads, ripping knees, like breaking backs, all, all sorts of crazy stuff because of the weights they're lifting. So um, I don't know. I think he'll be OK with, a, with the right kind of events. And unfortunately, the Wemby show seemed to be really pro for Larry, like really good for him in terms of the event lineup. I just think, you know, if you're tearing your, your biceps on a stone that's not even 200 kilos, then, you know, that's that's never going to be the last stone generally in a show. Um, the deadlift's good. He's really good at deadlift. Um, so that would be his probably one of his strongest events. Overhead for reps, it's going to be a lot of technique. He's good at overhead, um, but strongman's very, very different to powerlifting. He's a powerlifting champion. Um I don't think he'll make the podium at World's Strongest Man. Previously, I wanted to believe it. He, you know, so hyped up, such a hyped up athlete. But I just think that with the amount of in he's already been injured now, uh, so he's probably going to hold back a little bit. I would have thought he's got to recover from that. So, in terms of how far he will go, let's see what he does in Manchester. Let's see if he turns up. Let's see if he competes, um, and let's see how he does. Um, I saw him training with Hafthor in Iceland. He was fast, but was he as fast as? Laurent Charlet with the yoke. Um, was he as fast as Mateus with the farmers? He needs to be good at everything and not just good, great. And if he's not, if he's not the top three in every single event, then he's not going to win anything or make the podiums. Um, you can't win a show by being good at one or two events. And I just haven't seen enough to make make a really great, you know, decision on this. He competed at an amateur show wildly strong really like raw power just didn't have the technique fumbled a little bit made very very silly mistakes unfortunately for him it wasn't on purpose he came second and that's the only show i've seen him do in full but he really did shine in things like the mass wrestling going up against guys much much bigger than him um the overhead viking press was disgraceful he was just like ramming that up there like 22 reps or something with the comp weight i mean he's just very very strong there so I'd say let's see how he does in Manchester um, and then we'll do another video and we'll have a chat about Larry. But at the moment he's injured, hopefully healing. Um, I saw a video I put up recently of his deadlift 425. He had like chains and it's sort of hanging from his, sort of from his back. Is that good for him? Um, I think he should be resting. I'm not his mum though, so um, we'll, we'll see what he ends up doing. But I think as long as he knows what he's doing, he's the athlete. So we'll leave him to his recovery methods and he's going to keep pushing his boundaries, keep training like he does. Um, and we'll see how he competes later in the year. So I'll leave it there with Larry for the moment. Um, I would love one of these in which you explain the difference between the shows, who runs them, etc. OK, so Giuseppe, really briefly for anyone who's interested or wants to know, uh, Dion Masters runs the Strongman Corporation. That is the nationals and regional competitions in America for strongman and strong woman. Although it's all called strongman, I think they should be called strong woman. And strong woman not from a sexist point of view but i heard some women saying i competed in strongman the other day and it, it doesn't sound right so i think we need to call it strong or strong person call it something but um but yeah anyway going back uh deal masters runs those qualifiers those uh nationals and regionals a bit like this crossfit thing over there uh qualifies you for the arnold classic now this is what larry wheels was attempting to do to do an amateur um strongman corporation show compete and win that and then get his qualification spot for Arnold Classic Ohio, which is the big show for the final um, pro strongmen and amateurs. And the beauty part of this uh, route is really brutal, though. But if you can if you can win a qualifier and then win the amateur show at Arnold Ohio, the winner of that gets to go onto the pro stage with the pro strongmen, and you are officially a professional strongman. Uh, so that's their route in uh, to the Arnold Classic, a bit like Giants Live route into uh, World Strongest Man. So once you're on that Arnold stage, you know, all eyes are on you. It's a great spotlight for you. But to get there, uh, previous athletes who have done that, um, I want to say Alexei Novikov. I want to say Mikhail Shivlyakov from Russia. Um, let me get this right. Zach Hadge. 
uh, one of one part of the dynamic duo, the Had Brothers. He was on the sh on the stage, so I'm assuming he's won that competition. Uh, Mike Jenkins, uh, rest in peace. He was one of the competitors there, qualified and made it to the Arnold Classic. So uh, Dion runs that. I'm trying not to ramble too much. This video will be quite long. Uh, there's a guy called Marcel and Ilka Kinnunen. I think you say it like that. They run Strongman Champions League. Uh, those two guys, bit of a story. Um, hopefully I'll get this accurate. They, uh, they used to be, I'm thinking they were some kind of involvement with World's Strongest Man, possibly. And then they went, and when there was a divide, uh, 2005, I want to say, they set up IFSA. So, uh, you know, the IFSA World Strongest Man, which eventually folded, uh, but not until Big Z had won two titles, uh, I might add. So that was where all the best athletes, they actually left World Strongest Man and went to the IFSA World Strongest Man. Um, and Maris Pujanowski was left to dominate for a few years because he was the only big name that really stayed. If you ask the pros or ask the athletes, that's what they kind of tell me. Um, and all the big names went to IFSA. So when Z won his two titles, he was up against pretty much everybody bar Marius. Then when that folded, the athletes came back uh, to World's Strongest Man. I think um, Marius won the first one. And then after that, Zadrinus went on a rampage. Uh, so, yeah, those guys ran IFSA. They now run Strongman Champions League. That has qualifiers all around the world. Um, a bit like Tour de France, the winner has like a yellow jersey or yellow top um, and, and they do a good show. And it's a different show shown in um, lots of European countries. It's on, um, I think it's Dave or, or one of the Freeview Free Sat channels. And you can probably catch some of that on YouTube as well. So that's the other one. We just spoke about Glenn Ross and Ultimate Strongman. So he runs that with his business partner, David Roberts. David Roberts has a boxing background, used to work with Eddie Hearn. So he stepped away from kind of boxing promotion. Um, Glenn was kind of on his own running uh, Ultimate Strongman and they joined forces and they're kind of running Ultimate Strongman now. Um, and shout out to Martin C. He does the MCing and his son Danny and him do the DJing and all the music. Um, Martin's been a big part of Strongman for quite a few years now. He's really good friends with Terry Hollands. So he's sort of within that ultimate Strongman family as well. Um, and then you've got Giants Live. Giants Live is run by, as far as I know, Colin Bryce, Darren Sadler and Eddie Hall. Although speaking to Colin, I think he said there's four guys that run the, or four people uh, that make up the business team or make up the Giants Live um, company. And they basically put all this together all on their own um and then on the day they have all that help they have the team the big team behind them um so dave warner comes in and he helps with refereeing um bill kazmaier magnus van magnuson you know colin pulls a few world strings i think uh, and, and some of his friends from a long long time now um and they put those big shows together and for many many years giants live would only put on uh, britain's strongest man at the beginning of the year you'd have europe's strongest man in the middle of the year and i think from memory that was it for a while and then they added this uh, Giants Live World Qualifying Tour thing, which initially I thought, oh, they're just trying to kind of, I don't know, cash in on the World Strongest Man name. Um, but unknown to me, obviously, Colin works. I know he works at uh, World Strongest Man. He doesn't own the company, but he works for them um, as a commenta uh, commentator and a referee. Recently handed the referee job over to Magnus Ver Magnussen. And he, he's kind of been promoted now, uh, sort of some kind of, director of uh, ceremonies or whatever. So he's got a, a bit more sway, a bit more decision at Worlds. So having a Worlds qualifier as you know, in title makes sense because it really does explain the journey that athletes need to take to get to World's Strongest Man. So that's my understanding of those four. I might be wrong. Let me know if I am. Um, there are other shows. There are other promotions. Um, but though, those are the four main, in my opinion, the main ones. There's a couple of one-day shows. Um, I think it's the Fit Expo in Germany um, and, and there's some other stuff, Body Power in the UK that has a strongman show there, but it's more of an amateur show than a pro show. Um, and then you've obviously got all those Arnold Classics as well, which are run by uh, Jan Todd and uh, Steve Slater. So Steve makes uh, the Slater's logs and the stones. He's um, He has a hardware store in uh, Columbus, Ohio, and Jan Todd has been in strength since the, the beginning of time. So she's she was asked with her husband at the time, Terry Todd, to set up the Arnold Strongman Classic back in 2002. Um, and with one of their protégés, uh, Mark Henry, he came in and won the first one. And then 
uh, every year they've had kind of multiple champions. Uh, Sadrunas having won the show eight times. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my brief understanding of promoters. Um, I hope that covers your question, uh, Giuseppe. I could go through some other stuff, but that's that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of it. Um, any other questions? Then um, you know. Put, put them in the, the comments or send me a message on Facebook. Uh, it's Julian Howard, Strongman Promoter on Facebook or World Strongest Fan on Instagram. I wanted to change the name on Facebook to, so they all matched, but apparently if you get so many followers, that's it, you can't change the name. So I toyed with the idea of setting up a new account, but I just think it's too much hassle and you know I, I can do these, it's not a problem. So, um, so that's it on the promotion side of things. Um, Tim Jenkinson, Terry's transformation is crazy. Yeah, Terry's dropped a load of weight. He's put some pictures up today, um, really shredding now, really cutting down. So it'll be interesting to see what he looks like on the competition day, especially with like the sort of the spray tan and doing all these poses. I think he's done really, really well. I really, really do. I think Terry is a great guy. He's always been like the biggest guy, like out of all the strong men, um, bar like when Eddie ballooned up to some ridiculous size for winning worlds. Terry was the biggest guy I'd ever seen. Like his knees were like this. He was just a monster. So to see him go from that to what he is now, you just got to take your hat off to the guy. I mean, this is just crazy. You know, th these guys say they're going to do this transformation and they're going to give it a go. Uh, you expect them to lose a little bit of weight, but it's complete change in body composition. Like, you know, you wouldn't recognize the guy complete from, from where he was at his worst, or he would call his worst, uh, to where he is now. Complete madness. Um, so full respect for Terry Hollands. I really wish him the best of luck in his competition. But get that competition out of the way and get back to strongman. That's what you're that's what you're here for. That's what you're good at. Um, and I think with the new lean, mean uh, Terry Hollands, I heard uh, from Colin Bryce, world strongest man in 2020 is going to be coming back to the classic style world strongest man. What does that mean? Um, Colin explains he wants to take it back to how it used to be, what people keep asking for. Uh, that's going to be much more of a TV show uh, in terms of spectacle. So it's going to be less um, emphasis on max weights and everything just being ridiculously heavy. They did have a couple of unfortunate injuries at this year's World's Strongest Man, and um, he doesn't want to have a repeat of that. So he's really going to focus on the entertainment side and making it as competitive as possible. So. You're not going to have one event where it's so stupidly heavy that you're going to say, well, it's only Brian and Hathor that could maybe move that. Everything's going to be set to a level where everyone has the opportunity and it's a competitive um, playing field. A combination of moving events, grip events, overhead events, max events. There will be some max events, but there'll be less than what there have been in the most recent years. So looking forward to that. It's nice to see guys when they're able to sort of entertain a bit more rather than just see them struggling and sort of, you know, especially with the injuries, it's, it's really not good. Um, and also very interested to see how many athletes they have next year. It was 25 this year, 30 the year before. Hopefully they don't start dropping and it's down to 20. It, it's, it's down to the budget provided by IMG. It's down to a lot of factors. And hopefully the athletes get the information early enough that they can train for them. But if I, if I get any information, I will share it with people because I don't see why we can't talk about it. It's all a bit of fun. So, um, so that's it with. Um, with worlds uh, and terry um we have faith you can do it Kilisowski, real world strongest man from michael uh, he's a great strong man but he didn't win the world strongest man um and martins and mateus very 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 similar in terms of um all-round strength and um being the whole package of strong man uh mateus's deadlift is coming on which is great he um found out that one leg is slightly longer than the other so he has to build up his his shoe or he has to wear an insert that massively has helped and raised his deadlift up 10 15 kilos he just needs to keep training deadlift in my opinion keep working on his back keep working on his lockout um it's his one weakness everything else he's as good as you'd expect anyone to possibly be on any given day he has the dumbbell world record he has the polish um does he have the Polish log record or is that uh, Radzikowski? Uh, but he's got a really great overhead log. Um, he's really great with grip and frame carries. And he's just a real, very much like Marius was. He just, you know, he really goes for it. And, and he's just really great at a lot of events. So really hope he can bring his deadlift up. And hopefully he will win the World's Strongest Man one day. I think he will. He's young enough. Um, other guys, as they get older, it will get more difficult, in my opinion. 
Um, Big Z coming back next year. What a year to come back. If they're going to lower the weight slightly and, and level the playing field, he's a really great contender now. People saying he's finished. People saying he's too old. Uh, he's not. Mark Felix is older than uh, a lot older than uh, Zadrinus. And uh, Zadrinus will know exactly what he needs to do to win. Um, and a bit like Brian Shaw, he's very methodical. He knows the events like the back of his hand. He's been competing for over 20 years. So do not rule out uh, Big Z. And I wish him all the best. And if he makes the podium, I'll be happy for him. And if he wins it, how epic would it be? Uh, you know, five titles of world's strongest man to add to his two IFSA titles. So in my opinion, he already has six. But let's just we'll leave that one for another one, another video. <laughs> um Looking forward to it. Nice to see ex strong men getting involved in promotions and succeeding. Their rules, events, disciplines, their show, they will be respectful of Glenn's experience. Yeah, I mean, Glenn, you know, he knows the events better than anyone else. He used to compete in World's Strongest Man. He's done UK Strongest Man as well and Britain's Strongest Man. He's been around a while, um, just hasn't competed for quite a long time now. But he's been promoting for at least 15 years. The UK's, uh, sorry, the Ultimate Strongman brand has been around for about 15 years at least. Uh, majority of that time in Ireland and I think it was uh, he's from Ireland it was his baby he wanted to keep it where he lived it was comfortable and the, the, the business was obviously a lot smaller when it started and it's kind of mushroomed into this monster now um, you know sort of similar size to Giants Live probably a little bit smaller because of the size of arenas um, but still doing you know professional shows and uh, UK Strongest Man is a, is a massive title to hold um, as Eddie Hall did for those uh, six years um all oh, that crap event oh that's a crap event oh i'm not sure what that's for probably talking about that poll event when i was going back over the events um next they'll be bending bars on their heads with white towels <laughs> well ultimate strongman did have a bar bend uh it wasn't over the head i think it was anything bar the head so they were able to do it over their knees around their backs and they had to get it to a certain distance and then put it through um some markers and so it was quite well run, but unfortunately, every time they did a bar, they had to reset it because they, uh, they had one set of, like, not handles, but wraps that they had to put around the bar to protect the athlete. So the learnings from that was it looked great, but if you were there live, it was very slow going or slow moving. So I think if you do a bar bend, you really only want to have one bar um, and one, one shot at it because the guys, you know, they're going to be pretty taxed after that, especially if it's quite a difficult one. Um, Roman cars, does he mean sh chariots? <laughs> uh, well, he says Porsche. So Porsches are not chariots. They are for some people, not for me. I can't afford a Porsche, not yet. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the um, what the cars are, I mean, or what how the setup is. Um, but I think he just means chariots because he likes to refer to old times, uh, you know, going into battle and warriors and all that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it will be Porsches that they'll be uh, lifting and holding for time. Um, Followed by ripping phone books. Yeah, Glenn Ross, not Glenn Ross, sorry. Uh, Jeff Capes, I remember that as a child. It's one of my memories. I'm not sure what the TV show was or the program, but he had a phone book like this thick and he just ripped it in half. And I just, you know, that sort of thing as a child, you just, the Incredible Hulk, that kind of moment, um, that was pretty cool. So actually ripping phone books, if anyone, any of the strongmen are watching, it'd be great to see someone do that. Um, I'm sure there's a technique involved. Mark Felix has got a pretty good grip and some big hands. Maybe he could have a go. Uh, but yeah, phone book ripping, that would be fun. <laughs> maybe not a bigger spectacle, maybe as a side thing, maybe they can do a number of or something, but um, definitely bring back the old, old school phone book rip. Um, everyone's talking about Eddie's log. Ha ha. Yeah, very funny. <laughs> um, yeah, His, um, he, might, he should come back for that log record as well. All joking aside, Eddie's still got enough of a fire in his belly, I think, enough of a spark to do it. He doesn't have to push his body to the boundaries he did to win World Strongest Man. It's just one event. It's just one event. You know, train for log like some like he did for the deadlift. If anyone can show that they can really put their mind to something and push all these other shows to one side, because when he was training for that deadlift, everyone was saying you need to you can't just be a one man one trick pony. You need to train for Arnold. You need to train for Worlds. And he was training for Worlds. But secretly in the back of his mind, he had this massive bee in his bonnet about breaking that half ton deadlift, which he did. Um, so I feel he can take the log press record, um, but there are some boys pushing up those boundaries also getting pretty close to the mark. Graham Hicks is one of those people. Um, I feel he's got an over 220 kilo log on a good day. 
Um, 228 is going to be tough. Uh, Big Z held that record now for quite a while. Um, but yeah, if anyone can do it currently without injury, um, I mean, it's, again, Eddie's hurt himself, um, bicep injury of some kind. How's that going to hinder his overhead press? Um, it's not quite the nerve damage that Sadrinus has got, but it will be interesting to see if he comes back and goes for it. And, and I think he will. I think maybe if they did that as some kind of extra event at Britain's next year, um, I don't think there'd be a problem with that. I think chuck it in there, halftime show, Eddie Hall comes out, bit of a cheer, get that log sp- and the spotlights on him. Let's have it. Let's go for that log press world record. I think that would help sell some tickets. Um, not that they need it for Britons. It usually sells out pretty well, actually. Uh, but I think they should. I think log press next year for Ed definitely should be on the cards. Fingers crossed. Um, when is the UK Strongest Man going to happen from Logical, mate? Uh, UK Strongest Man is the 26th, 27th and 28th of July. So it's going to be in St. Albans. You can pick up all the merchandise whilst you're at the event if you want to. Oh, I'm dying in here. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a good show. It's a three day event split into groups A and groups B. A couple of events on Friday, a couple of events on Saturday. And then the 10 finalists, I believe, will go in head to head or, or into the final on the Sunday. Um, pretty long day. I think I read it was something like one o'clock till 7 p.m. So if you are planning on going to St. Albans in the UK, it will be a late finish if you are traveling home and you have work on Monday. So my advice would be take the Monday off um, and just enjoy the show. You know, have a few drinks, maybe stay over in a like a hotel or a cheap hotel um, and then make your journey back on the Monday. That way you can really enjoy it, because what I think they like to do is turn it into a kind of festival style feel. Um, They have a DJ there, a bit of a disco, maybe a band. Um, and you've got all the food carts and everything else around the back there. So, you know, you can really have a good uh, a good day there, really. Take the kids. It's a family show. Um, I've been two years ago, I think it was. And, uh, yeah, apart from the travel, because it's not – I mean, it is closer than going to Leeds, I guess. But, uh, yeah, once you've got past the travel side of it and accommodation, it's all good. So, um, yeah, not too long for that one. A couple of weeks. Um, I think Larry needs to put on some weight, Tim Jenkinson. Yes, I think he does. I think this is the real issue here. Um, the weight helps protect the muscles and protect the joints, and he's just not put on any weight at all that I, I've seen. He maybe is heavier, but he still looks the same, ripped with abs. So I think he needs to put some weight on to, to help protect himself. Um, but we'll see how he does during his recovery. Maybe he'll use that as a bit of a bulking phase. I think that would be good for him. Um, just depends on how much he, he puts on his you know his, his appearance and how he wants to look to his fans. Um it won't add that much strength, but it would add a little bit and more for the safety factor. I think it would be it would do him some good. Um, there's so many different players, companies in the sport. I wonder if it's only ever going to be uh, a single central federation of some sort, like other more established sports. Thanks for that. Uh, Giuseppe, I don't think it will. I don't think it will. You will never get um, Marcel and Ilka, uh, Dion, Colin and Darren and Glenn Ross all working on the same show. You just won't because they've worked so, so hard to create their own little piece of strongman. Um, And we're not talking months here or even a couple of years. We're talking decades for some of these guys. You know, they've been running it for over 10 years. I remember as a kid listening to Colin Bryce uh, on World's Strongest Man as the commentator, and he's only a few years older than me. So he must have been in their really, really young age. Um, Storyline is he's friends with Gregor Edmonds, who is the son of Douglas Edmonds, who used to run, sort of put together the World's Strongest Man. And those two boys uh, used to hang out together as kids. Um, There's a photograph on Colin's uh, Facebook page somewhere of him sat on John Paul Sigmundson's knee. Pretty cool (laughs) Uh, back then. And uh, and I think when he got older, he got into presenting and kind of blagged his way into a commentary role on World's Strongest Man. And ever since then, he's kind of just been a fixture of that show every year, especially in the UK, um, and teamed up with uh, ex-competitor Darren Sadler, who competed multiple times at World's Strongest Man, and they formed Giants Live, and that is now the qualifying tour for World's Strongest Man. And it just wouldn't seem right with Colin not being involved with World's Strongest Man. You know, it's kind of... He's he's good at that. He's, I think his his voice as commentator is is maybe what I'm missing in, in the current show. Um, you know, it's great seeing little uh, sort of tidbits and, and interviews with Eddie Hall, talking to the guys. I think he's good for that. I think take him out, have a bit of fun with the athletes. But when it comes down to the, you know, just the voice of Strongman, the voice of World's Strongest Man, I think Colin should definitely retain that. It's one of those um, one of those things that just makes it World's Strongest Man. So, Colin, if you're listening, please don't change that. Go, you know, 
remain as the commentary on the live show, on the TV show that we get to watch at Christmas. Uh, Magnus does a great job as the ref. Eddie can come in and do interviews. And you usually have like a female presenter as well. Um, always nice to, to have a female in the show as well. Not just a bunch of big uh, hairy strongmen. <laughs> um, Prime Eddie would log 240 if he used legs instead of strict pressing all the time from Max Bremer. Um, yeah, he probably would have done. Um, I've seen Dimitar Savatinov press 240, not on a log, but on a, an Olympic bar with the plates. He's walked it out of the rack and pressed it overhead. So the guys are capable of pressing that amount. It's just a matter of whether they can clean it from the floor in a log, with a log, and then press it overhead because you're holding the handles this way, not this way. So slightly different grip, slightly safer, apparently. So um, it will be interesting to see if anyone can do that. Um, hopefully it won't be so close to the Arnolds next year. Yeah, hopefully they, they move well so that it's not too close to the Arnolds. Um, crazy how Mateus has been so strong for uh, so far, even with deficiency yet. Yeah, I mean, it is really his only week uh, event that I'm aware of. He's really great at stones. So, yeah, if you can bring his deadlift up, I think spend the next 12 months, Mateus, working on your deadlift and you will be one of the top, you know, you really are one of the top strongmen. You've come second at World's Strongest Man now twice. Uh, so, yeah, I, I really feel this is it. You know, you just got to work on that deadlift and that will be the difference between winning the Worlds and not winning Worlds because he can win Arnold's um, and he can win other one-day giant shows as he just did at Wembley. Uh, it's just bringing that deadlift up enough to win World's Strongest Man. Unless they don't have a deadlift in the final. Um, they had a deadlift hold this year. So, you know, it was his, his real opportunity to, to steal it. But, uh, you know, Martins, again, great all-round athlete, did really, really well. Only dropped six points, I think it was, or was it four points? Only dropped four points throughout the whole competition. So, you know, almost a perfect score. And, you know, everyone did the same events. Everyone lifted the same weights. It was the heaviest squat they've ever had at World's Strongest Man. The monster truck was taking athletes out left, right and centre because it was so heavy. People tearing their Achilles. Uh, you know, it wasn't a light event by any means. People saying, oh, it was, you know, it wasn't it wasn't the old school world or it wasn't heavy enough. 600 kilo yokes. What do you guys want? You know, it was it was a proper World's Strongest Man. No issues. I had no messages from anyone saying any issue with in terms of it being fixed or changed events or anything like that. It was completely, you know, completely legit. Um, Martins did really, really well. Now he has to go back and do it again. This is it now. Lots of uh, great strongmen have said it's it's not, I don't say it's easy, but they've said it's easy to win it once. It's harder to win it a second time. Uh, and I think when you win it more than once, you really do stamp your name down as I am at this particular moment in time the strongest man in the world, um, you know, and if you can do it more than once, it really does uh, solidify that title. Hence, you know, Brian Shaw will always be spoke of as one of the greats, having four titles. Zadrunas also having four. Magnus van Magnussen having four. Bill Kazmaier has three. Maris Pudzianowski has five. So those guys are always going to be on the tip of everyone's tongue. As soon as you mention strongman, those are the names that you'll go to because they're the names you know the most because they're the most promoted in terms of legacy and sort of the legends of strongman. Um, what did you think of the five episodes of Strongest Man in History TV show? Scott Emerson. Hey, Scott, I haven't seen them. I haven't watched any of them. Um, I live in the UK and the TV show is only available in America currently on the History Channel on history.com. So I can't get it. I know there's some dodgy links I've been shared, people sent to me, but you've got to watch it at the time that it's on. And so the time doesn't necessarily work over here because if it's, I don't know, 8 or 9 p.m. in America, then it might be 2 a.m. here. And I can't, I really can't on the weekday stay up and, and like come to work half asleep. I can't. So I haven't seen any of them. I've seen the clips on YouTube. It looks good, factually incorrect, uh, but it looks like it's been well filmed. I think there's been some drama this week. Robert Oberst has, uh, has been quoted as the log press world record holder. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, that's Adrenas Zavikas and the American log press record is uh, Rob Kearney's. So this has been filmed reasonably recently. Those records, Rob Kearney's record may not have, he may not have broken that log at that point. So I'll take that one out. But Zadrunas is the world record holder in the log. So I think they needed to have done their research. The TV show, the people filming it, not necessarily ask the athlete, but they should have, they should have Googled that. It's all there. So, yeah, it looks great. It just needs to be right, because if you're not a fan of the sport, if you're not like us and talking about it here, if you're a general public, you know, someone just watching it, you're going to believe that. And, that you know, it's got to be right. So looks good. Looking forward to watching it. 
Um, but being a, like a bit of an Uber fan, I'll probably be picking holes in the uh, in the stats of the detail. Um, but as long as they get that right going forward, I think they might do a second series. It's been quite well received online, I believe. Um, it would be nice to see it on Netflix. I don't know if they would ever do that. Probably not if it's on history. Um, or maybe even do a downloadable version for online because not everyone can see it. And it's not just America. You've got the rest of us dying to see it. So, um, yeah, so every, people who've watched it said it was good. I'm guessing you may have watched it yourself. Um, but, yeah, I'll try and catch it at some point when when I can in this country. <laughs> Makes a change for the UK to, to miss out. But, hey, it's got to be got to be fair for everyone. Um, thanks for all the video and the live chat. Great to see full time, well versed strongmen chap keeping us all updated. The UK's coverage of strongman on TV is slow and pitiful, so we thank you for everything. No worries. Uh, Finley Roofing and Building. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been putting up these little videos. I did a poll and said, would you guys rather have this or would you rather have just like little videos of the guys lifting? You know, I speak to Graham, I spoke to Graham a few days ago, um, you know, just about what are we talking about? I can't remember now. His wife just had a baby, by the way. Uh, he didn't compete at World Strongest Man because he thought that she was going to have the baby, and after all, she didn't. Um, and um, Graham made the right decision, but this year he could have done really, really well. I think the events would have suited Graham, and actually, Graham Hicks could have made podium. Um, would he have won World Strongest Man? Not sure. Martins is a bit of a machine, and so is Mateus. But um, I think Graham would have had his best World Strongest Man run if he had competed this year. Um, great deadlifter, great overhead presser really great with moving events he used to be an under 105 athlete so really great at medleys yeah graham you missed it man you missed it there was that overhead medley as well you, you know it was lined up for graham hicks to win world's strongest man wasn't it but uh maybe we can get him back next year we just need to talk him into it twist his arm but yeah um no worries don't mind helping share the information what i do have anyway um Eddie's doing the log lift challenge again, or am I tripping, Max Bremer? Um, he's not stated it out outrightly. Um, mess, uh, talking to Colin, messaging him on Facebook uh, a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago, he said that the not having that log press record, it's the one thing Eddie Hall hasn't done. Uh, in terms of like he sort of his slogan, "Back up your bullshit." Uh, it's like a British saying. Um, you know, I'm going to hit half ton deadlift. He did it. I'm going to win world's strongest man. He did it. He's going to win UK Strongest Man and Britain Strongest Man, and he did it. Um, and then it came to this, you know, the axle record he got, and then it came to the log press. And it's just, oh, he just wanted to unify everything. He also has, obviously, the British dumbbell that we mentioned earlier at 124 kilos. So currently, he's got quite a few records. Um, and it's just, a, you know, it is a shame for him. He doesn't, I just think he doesn't want to do full shows anymore. He's kind of given as much as he's going to give. And if he can get this log press, it really would be sort of a little, where does it end? Like, where does it end? He could get the log press record. I don't think it would satisfy him. I think Eddie's that he needs to get back and compete. Um, not necessarily at the, the world's level. He's capable of it. But if he wants to be back in, if he wants to feed feed that hunger that he's got, I can see him doing really, really well at Britain's Strongest Man. Some of these one-day Giants live shows, he'll have all the information before everyone else, so he'll know what he's doing. Um, there's no excuse for him not to to put his put his hat in the in you know put his cap in the game or whatever. Um, I really think Eddie could come back, should come back for him more than for anything. It's not about the money now. I think the guys, you know, he's busy, busy driving around trying to you know be an actor, um, be in TV shows, but you know. I don't know what he's got lined up. He could have loads of stuff. He could be so busy. There's just no chance. Uh, definitely doing a log in a one-day show is doable. I can see he can fit that into his schedule. Um, competing in a full show, if he's got to go back to training as he was, it needs to be, I guess it needs to be worth his while because winning another Britons means he's got like, you know, six uh, or seven or whatever. Um, so, you know, does he need to do that? Is that going to really make a difference to his legacy probably not but getting that log press record i think that really would um scratch that itch that you know colin says he's got right now he just it's just bugging him so um watch this space uh, a couple of guys have said it kale beck on starting strongman in america's also said he feels that's going to happen we just got a little you know you get these feelings sometimes as a as a fan you watch things and it doesn't necessarily have to be said but um eddie hall coming back for a log press I don't see it being an impossibility at all. I think it's definitely something that 2020 
it'd be nice to see um, after, you know, having a bit of a holiday, a bit of a, I say holiday, a bit of a layoff from Strongman. Um, awfully busy right now he is, but um, yeah, it's good to see him back if he does come back. What do you think of Obest's comments about deadlifts from Scott Emerson? Um, I watched two hours of Joe Rogan. I think I kind of I fell asleep, not because it was rubbish, but it was late, man. I started it in uh, in the UK pretty late, so I haven't watched all of it. I'm still like, I've got an hour to go, uh, but I've seen all the YouTube clips and I've, you know, I've shared a few on my other pages. Um, I'm not an athlete. I'm not a PT. I'm just a fan. It makes sense to me if you don't have to train deadlifts because you are you don't have it in a competition and you can savour your lower back. I actually have lower back problems. Athletes will tell me it's because I don't deadlift correctly. They're probably right. But I actually feel a hell of a lot better not having done deadlifts. So I do. I can overhead press 105 kilos, which is not that light. It's it's decent, I think, for a uh, you know, 90 kilo natural strong man, if you want to call me that. Um, and... You know, deadlift I was okay at, 205 kilos was where I maxed out at my best. Currently, I'm deadlifting when I do do it occasionally around 170, 180. It's not great. So uh, I'm not a great deadlifter anymore. I wasn't anyway. Um, but I used to find every morning I'd get up with a real bad back, really sore. I sit in a desk, uh, sorry, sit at a desk all day. So I don't move a lot. And, and so you would think deadlift would help that. But it's very hard to do your job when you can't sit up straight or your back's in constant pain from just I used to love I love deadlifts. I absolutely love them. Uh, it's my favorite lift. Or maybe my overhead presses now. I don't know. But um, it was my favorite lift. I loved it. And I just, you know, I couldn't wait to get to the gym to deadlift. I wasn't interested in bodybuilding. And, you know, I mucked around with farmer's walk and had to go on a stone and, and all that sort of stuff. But deadlift for me, it just it's so satisfying when you got it. Uh, I remember fighting to get like, I don't know, 150 kilos and then about 170 after a year or two, you know, that was a record. Then I got 190, 200 I got a few times. Then I did it for some singles. Then I got 205. And then it kind of, I don't know, I kind of maxed out as much as I could with the body that I got um, without, you know, maybe I didn't train hard enough. Maybe I didn't have the right diet. But going back to Robert Oberst, I think, I mean, I feel better for not deadlifting as often. I was deadlifting every session. And that's obviously wrong. Um, and I was maxing out every session and that's wrong. So it's kind of a double edged sword, really. I mean, you can't really train without deadlifting. And if you train without deadlifting, you know, it's, it's hitting multiple muscle groups. It's a bit like the squat. They're the two like king lifts, really, because they, they do so much for your body. But I think now I'm nearly 40 years old now. I think I need to start, you know, thinking about my body because, yes, I haven't competed as a pro strongman, but still. I'm putting my body under sort of strain um, and I don't want to have injuries. And I did have some sciatica for a while in my leg, uh, trapping nerves in my lower back. I had someone come and do some deep tissue massage. It's a lot better now. I don't have that pain. My leg's not twinging. Uh, you know, like he said, if I'm a professional and I'm doing it to get paid, it makes sense. If I'm Julian in the gym, do I need to be pushing myself to the absolute limit? I mean, you watch these guys do it and that's the problem. You kind of get sucked into it and you just, you want to be them or you want to, you want to fight and compete against yourself. And that's in a lot of people. And, and I'm really competitive, but I know when I can't compete and I'm not competing anywhere with a 205 kilo deadlift for max. Um, but I'm happy. I'm enjoying my training. And I just think you need to just train to your strengths. Um, but yeah, I don't have a problem with what he said. A lot of powerlifters did. Uh, a lot of other strong men said maybe because he's not as strong as they are or because his deadlift's not so great. That's why he said it. Um, I don't know. I'm not Rob. I don't know why he said it. Kale Beck's come on, defending, um, put a lot of good points forward as to why you should or shouldn't deadlift. Uh, but hey, good for Robert Oberst. He got on the Joe Rogan show, podcast being seen by millions. Uh, it's helped open up some doors, I'm sure. Everybody's talking about it on Facebook and YouTube. So if you didn't know who Robert Oberst was before, you do now. <laughs> yeah, I think it's done him, him the world of good getting his name out there. He just needs to, you know, try and back it up now with a little bit more, uh, you know, a bit more in competition. And also he's got the History Channel show as well, which he's part of. So, uh, you know, good stuff for Robert Oberst right now, really, um, apart from a little bit of negativity online around his deadlift comment. Um, I live in Florida. It's pretty good and funny. I'm not sure what that's about. That's BLT or be lieutenant um yes thank you for the information Ober said he can break the overhead world record right now from scott okay um yeah 
his longest record. Maybe he can, but he needs to go to a competition and compete to do it. So uh, a lot of these records will only count if you do it in competition. So that's going to be at Worlds, uh, a Giants Live qualifier. I think they're the only two that would qualify it as a world record, which isn't really fair because you could break the world record at the Ultimate Strongman, you know, at one of their shows. But for whatever reason, records have from memory been broken there and not been credited unless it was done in a, a Giants Live show. It's almost like Giants Live and Strongest Man kind of between them are kind of running this thing. Um, I mean, obviously there are records that are held and count at the Arnold Classic. Um, and I guess the log press would definitely be one of them, but it's on a different kind of log. It's on that big Slater wood log whereas most competitions you'd use a metal log. Um, and Zadrinus will know, but there's a certain circumference. It's, I think it's 12 inches, maybe 13, uh, to be a, you know, a standard official log, um, you know, for the log press record anyway. There's a specific size it has to be. So uh, I guess as long as the equipment's right, a bit like Ed's 500 kilos, if you're going to pull it, it has to be on a, a stiff, you know, Olympic bar. You can't be doing elephant bars, which will bend like this, uh, you know, bumper plates. It's got to be set equipment the same as the record was previously broken on so that's my understanding on the log press anyway um thanks for the great coverage from toad in the hole no worries um eddie Hall can get the log lift if he trains for it again i mean his pressing strength is still insane uh he is busy and missing the training sessions losing weight and stuff and still benches 220 times six from max bremer yeah he is and this is my point this is my argument eddie's still a mon uh, static monster strongest presser to ever live uh ever um even more so than zadrinus in the bench press uh i think eddie could have gone for the bench press re world record i just don't know if he wants to risk tear in a peck or something you know because that's again another really good injury but eddie great great presser um it's a shame he, he, you know, he really focused on strongman. I think there was a period in time where we, a couple of us trying to get him to do powerlifting, you know, people commenting, you know, try powerlifting, do a powerlifting meet, break the all time powerlifting record, a bit like Hafthor tried. Uh, he never did. I guess there's no money in there. I did hear him say once, you know, it's, it's not his thing. He, he's a strongman. And, and I like that, you know, it's, that's, he sticks to where he's at, whereas Larry's doing a bit of everything. Um, specialist, he's a specialist as a strongman. And, you know, got a lot more famous for it than maybe some powerlifters who have done you know similar sort of stuff um it also says andy bolton tried to clown him on facebook for saying that who's that david forbes uh what about eddie hall doing the the powerlifting or, or robert oberst and the deadlift uh i think you mean the deadlift don't you with oberst i saw those comments um i don't agree with oberst but a lot of people who made responses sounded dumb <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm not going to say I'm not dumb, but, you know, unless you're Andy Bolton and an athlete and you know what you're talking about, it's difficult. Um, you know, we've all got a, an opinion. I'm giving you my opinion right now. I might be wrong. Um, but generally, I only share stuff that I've either heard from the horse's mouth. So whether it's from Colin Bryce or I've heard Eddie say it or I've heard Graham Hicks say it or whoever, um, having, you know, do, keeping in touch with these guys is handy because it means... They may say something that's not a big deal to them, but to me, it's kind of information, you know, it's, it's stuff that is it's worth knowing. Um, the only thing I can't clarify or guarantee is that Eddie Hall will do that, dead, uh, the, the log press record again. But it's a feeling that, you know, you get that feeling that if Colin's mentioning him, it's something he wants to do. Colin and Darren are the guys and Eddie, if he's part of Giants still, to, uh, to make it happen um, on Eddie's terms as well. So he'll get to pick the lifts, he'll get to use the log that is his log. Um, so, yeah, perfect conditions if he wants it. It's just he's got to want it. Um, Andy Bolton was laughing at Robert's deadlift numbers, but I remember when Bolton tried strongman, he totally bombed out and came dead last at the Arnold's. I mean, I can't remember that one. I know he did. He went to the Arnold's, didn't he? And he didn't do too well. And I know Andy Bolton went to Europe, strongest man, and tried to deadlift. Um, I'm sure they said he'd never deadlifted with, or doesn't regularly deadlift with straps. I'm not sure whether that's standard straps or the figure eights. He had a real bad time with the with that deadlift he pulled 420 and then he missed 440 and then that was it he was out um and you know he's pulled a thousand pounds before and andy's been really really ill recently so you know wishing him a speedy recovery um but yeah i don't think andy will be going back to doing any like you know 440 kilos i hope not anyway um you know he he was the first guy to a thousand pounds on the deadlift a bit like eddie hall first guy to half time uh, so I think, you know, that's that will always be his claim to fame, plus his multiple powerlifting uh, records and titles. 
Um, I wish Eddie did some powerlifting meet in his prime, 300 bench, 450 squat, 440 wall deadlift. And if he specialised in bench, he could get the bench all-time record. Easy. Yeah, that was also my feeling. So I don't think he's going to do it now. I think Ed's too far gone to do anything to that extent. So he could if he wanted to, but if he's got as much on as he says, he's got on films and TV and advertisement and promotions and all the stuff that he's doing. Uh, he's constantly travelling. He's got the Eddie Eats America show going to be on, uh, you know, on satellite at some point. I don't know what channel that's on, uh, but they've already filmed most of that. Then, um, yeah, finding time to suddenly reverse back, get you know, put on all that weight again and train like he was, like an absolute machine all the time. I don't think he's going to do that. But if you give him the log press, one event, something he's already good at, and he can just focus on that, I think he can do it. Um, I think he can have an attempt at it at least. Uh, whether or not he presses it. Um, I mean, he did start using legs right at the end, like right at the end of his, like I say, career. Just before he retired, I saw a lot more pressing and he, he was just giving a little bit of a push at the end. Um, and logs were flying up a lot easier. Um, he always said he didn't like doing it because when you've got that kind of weight under you, it's really dangerous, obviously, already. But if you sort of jerk it and you get it wrong, you know, there was one which went over the back and landed on the back of his head. So I think he was just very nervous um, and he felt a lot more comfortable doing it strict. But strict in that kind of way, it's just absolutely crazy. <laughs> uh, and I get a lot of lift out of my pressing. I mean, obviously not lifting that weight. But if I was to strict press a bar, you're talking 60 kilos. If I put some behind it, I've got 105. So decent increase using legs. Um, he had some patella tendon knee issue or he's got some, some straps under his kneecaps um but he's managed himself to get through all these events so how bad can it be um so i feel that yeah give it another crack eddie uh definitely good opportunity to break the log press record or if not hype up a show uh opportunity is definitely going to be there um Oberst, one of those guys that's really great who's not really great at any one thing he's just a grinder and can stay in the fight and beat a lot of the top guys from David Forbes. I mean, Obi made the final last year. Um, he, it was an Atlas Stone knockout, which I hated because there was a, like, a lot of guys that didn't get to make the finals. Um, but yeah, I think Obi can, you know, he can do well when he wants to. It's got to be the right kind of show. He's the kind of guy that could be winning America's Strongest Man multiple times. You know, a lot of the big names don't seem to compete there. Um, wouldn't it be cool to say you're like five times America's Strongest Man plus if he can break that uh, American log press record, that's some decent wins for an American, um, you know, and making world strongest man and making the finals, you know, it, it starts to build up a nice little uh, kind of compete and go and maybe do our American strongest man. I don't think you're banned from that. I don't think it's non pro. Uh, you know, I think it's a, like they call it a, what they call it an, a pro am. I think they call it something like that over there, but I'm sure that they can, you know, amateurs and professionals compete together and they can, and they can even take the title. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's already got his name in the mix for that. We'll find out. Um, is there any heavy benching videos of Eddie on the internet? The highest I've seen him is 265 for six with easy pause reps. I think Max, I think that's the Max I've seen him do. Um, crazy weight for reps. Um, it'd be nice to see him do like a 300. I think he's got 300 on Wikipedia as his max. Um, and looking at that number, you can already tell he can do it. It's just a case of concentrating on it. And he doesn't even have to stand up. It's a bench press uh, and and probably one of his best events. I mean, based on the videos on YouTube, I mean, doing it with like people holding onto the bar, two girls each side, four people, just mental. Like, you know, just the, the core strength to hold the bar. Um, give him something, anything, and he'll bench it. I mean, I used to watch the the uh, and the Hulk, uh, Hulk smash YouTube video, which was popular when it came out. And I, you know, I knew it was heavy, but then you see Eddie lifting it and there's like a couple more plates on the bar. So, you know, one of those people that should try and do something with his bench press. It'd be a shame not to, um, as well as that log press. Oberst is a good overhead presser. Yeah, he is good at overhead. Um, he was good at stones. I think he's kind of one of those, he's kind of like a middle strong man. He's not, he's not like a newbie. He's not an amateur. He's a pro. Um, he's good at certain events. I couldn't off the top of my head tell you what his weaknesses are. Apart from deadlift, maybe. Um, but yeah, he has made the finals, but he has had a lot of injury trouble when he spoke about that on the podcast with Joe Rogan. So, you know, the guy's been through a lot, thrown the towel, and then he decided to come back, and glad he did. Um, he's now got some opportunities having been in this show. 
I can't see him leaving uh, the competitive side of things. I just feel personally America's Strongest Man would be something to get him, you know, get him a bit more confidence and get him back in the game and then try and compete again at some maybe some Arnold Classics uh, or uh, World's Strongest Man. Um, if you want to compete at the Arnold, you just need to do the qualifiers um, and place high enough. And Or if you don't win an Arnold, you have to build up enough points to make the final. That's how that sort of setup works there. He does well in the truck pool too. What happened to Mike Burke? That guy was so damn good. Mike Burke um, runs a construction company, um, I believe, and had had enough of injuries. He was he used to be like really good buddies with Brian Shaw. They used to train together. There was one year, 2014 or 13, where they're just overhead pressing in the same heat. It was quite fun to watch. I think Brian beat him just. Um, and Mike did Arnold's a couple of years in a higher. And then just decided, you know, enough's enough. The... As Oberst would say, the risk versus reward uh, ratio wasn't there. He was doing well enough, but not well enough to make enough money to justify not being able to do his main job and be injured and go through the pain. So he called it a day. He achieved what he wanted to. He had a really good grip as well. Did a lot of the road record breakers, uh, like Thomas Inch dumbbell um, like for distance. Uh, I think called it Mighty Mitts or something they called it. Um, and then he's now retired from strongman or pro strongman and just runs his business and he must be happy i've not heard or seen anything from him so once these guys really do decide make that decision you know as long as they're happy i'm happy um so mike burke another good athlete i met him in the arnold's um you know and he seemed generally a nice guy um Eddie was smart, trained without a belt, which gave him such a insanely strong core that ha that helped him a lot. Yeah, he said in his videos he would he would train all year without his belt and without any sort of support. And then when it came to World's Strongest Man, he would stick it on like a sort of shield of armor, and it just gave him that confidence to just push a little bit harder, go a little bit heavier. And as he did, obviously, you know, he did some crazy things when he was, um, you know, going for that World's Strongest Man title, especially in the last two years that he did. So sort of 2016 and 2017. Brian, Eddie, Obi, Nick have good fun on the history show, especially when Obi loses some of the non-lifting challenges to Eddie and has to pay the consequences. I look forward to seeing what those are, Scott. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the new Bosnian guy who deadlifted at 440? So Bosnian, so Nedzmin Ambaskovic, I think that's who you're talking about. Really nice guy. Um, did a Facebook Live and I sort of said hello and, you know, said hi back. It was, not, it was nice having a bit of a chat with him. Um, it seems he's, he's very happy to be there, you know, first time in a really big show. I can't imagine, he's quite young, walking out there, sort of six to 8,000 people, uh, lots of lights on you, the music, the adrenaline. And he did really, really well. And he was brought into deadlift and he deadlifted. He was really disappointed he didn't pull more than 440. Uh, but hey, that's not a bad deadlift, especially for a first show. Um, he did, I think he did 400, 420, 440, missed the 455, I think it was. Uh, definitely had it in the tank. It just wasn't to be on the day. So next time they do that kind of show, he could definitely achieve that. Um, in terms of all-round strongman, I think he's just a specialist. I think for now he's just a deadlifter, um, unless you've seen any other videos. To train to be a full all-round strongman takes years. And as Larry Wills is finding out, you can be really crazy strong, but it still won't make you necessarily good at strongman. So, um, yeah, really nice guy. Hope he comes back. Um, I don't see him training to be a full around strongman, but I can see him continuing on that journey to sort of pull a really heavy deadlift um, along with a couple of other guys. Um, what do you think of the new? Here we go. They said Mike Burke could pinch four two by fours together and hold it out in front of him, probably. And that that comes from his construction background, working with a lot of uh, metal and I think it was mainly wood and carpentry that he was involved in. So they probably were doing that sort of thing daily. Um, and, you know, from all this sort of chopping tiles and stuff, he had some pretty decent sized forearms on him as well. Um, whatever happened to Kevin Knee? Not sure. Uh, toad in the hole. I think he re obviously retired, had a few injuries. He was a really uh, like good, young and up and coming strongman. Did really well for a while. Uh, made a name for himself. His name gets brought up quite a lot, actually. Um, I'd like to know where he is, actually. You know, what's he doing? Is he still lifting? Uh, has he stopped lifting? People like Derek Poundstone, it was really great to meet him a few years ago. Um, you know, he was a monster. And, you know, he still trains. But again, as you get older and you get more injured, you kind of, you know, you've got to start looking after yourself and you've got to make a decision. When is it time to go? I think Eddie pulled the plug a bit early. 
some of the other guys a bit late um and kevin need probably a little bit early but i don't know the circumstances uh, maybe these guys do uh david forbes said he was super injury prone um yeah really great potential real shame real shame but um yeah if anyone knows anything about kevin you know maybe put it in the comment here and, and you know we can carry on the chat afterwards in the comments but um anyway guys i'm gonna make a move now it is 11 o'clock here in the uk so i've got to get ready go back to work tomorrow what a shame um hope you enjoyed the updates it was nice chatting with you guys covered quite a lot today i only really wanted to cover the uh, ultimate strongman uk strongest man but we covered a little bit about world strongest man possible things with eddie hall um all the different strongman promoters and sort of how they you know come together to make up the shows that we watch whether it be on facebook youtube or uh, the television um so anyway i will um have a think about another subject we can talk about in between that i'll probably put up some more videos of athletes just to keep things ticking on i don't want the channel to kind of get stale and have nothing posted for a week or two um there's always something happening in the world of strongman um but yeah ultimate strongman shows up next um and following on from that my understanding is it's giants live in manchester in september uh but other than that if there's anything else i will let you know and if i think of anything else i'll put together a little chat and we can uh, do this again maybe in a few days time Anyway, guys, have a great weekend and I'll speak to you soon. Catch you later.